I will say, there must be millions of kitchen table economists, also known as parents, all over the country asking what in the world is the value of an economist degree in Washington, D.C. Because if we are failing to answer the simple question that Senator Daines asked, which is, are we better off today than we were a year ago? The answer is emphatically, no. That, that's not a question that people at the kitchen table are asking in a serious manner. When you ask yourself if the average person in this country, whether inflation was better this month than wages, the accumulative effect of inflation in an average household in the country, when your gas prices are up 40% and your utilities are up 20%, the answer is no. If you have had a 4% increase in your wages and a 7% increase in inflation, the bottom line is that your spending power is down, not up. If, in fact, you can look at inflation as an additional tax on those folks with fixed incomes, are they better off? The answer is no. This is not a hard question to even dig into. This is a simple question that is clear. When your food is higher and your clothing is higher and your utilities are higher and your gas is higher, to suggest that we are anything other than worse off this year than we were last year, you don't even have to believe me. Ask me. Ask the president's approval ratings. The lowest ever. Why? It's because the average American family is suffering through an incredible crisis that they don't have to hear what you are see, saying. They can see with their own eyes the disappearing dollars in their accounts. This is not hard to see. This is easy to see. Uh, what we should be asking ourselves is how do we make it better? Not, not, not pretending as if it's not bad. It's really bad and getting worse. When you are at a 40-year high infl in inflation, this is not something that the average person says, I don't really understand what inflation is anymore. They don't even ask the question, what is the definition of transitory? Because this is not transitory. So the, the question I, I, I pose, if I had a question that for all three of you, is how do we tell the American people that the inflationary impact is not devastating to someone like the woman who raised me, a single mother, who's looking at her account go down and her challenges go up? How, how, how do we say to that person, that there is somehow, some way, good news uh, in the current economy. And frankly, the confusion that's going to be caused at tax time when, when we accelerated the tax refunds through the $300 a monthly payment, that leads to confusion and a delay in refunds because we thought there was a better way to deal with the child tax credit. I think that's going to add more confusion to this economy, more, less confidence in this economy going, going forward. So uh, I hear what you're saying. and I think the average American is literally sitting there asking themselves, this cannot be the banking committee in the United States Senate unable to come to the conclusion that we came, through, came to in January 21, February of 21, March of 21, January of 22, February of 22, and we're going to be saying the same thing in March of, 20, March of 22 as well. So I'd love to hear how inflation is not having the negative impact that every other person in the country seems to be fully uh, going through right now. Well, Senator Scott, I... Look, we understand, the president understands your kitchen table economics and your, you know, what people are concerned around around the table. Part of the challenge is we are in a once in, a, we hope, only 100-year uh, pandemic. We've been living with this for two years. In this country, we've had 900,000 deaths. The cases, we are still living with this pandemic. What is hard for all of us to understand and appreciate is what would have happened without the American Rescue Plan, without the other efforts of the federal government and the Federal Reserve to rescue this economy and ensure that we got through whole. I appreciate that is a very hard counterfactual to contemplate. 
Uh, I am not saying that we are exactly where we want to be, but as we have highlighted, we have had the strongest recovery uh, you know, on record. We are doing better than our peers. Unemployment has fallen dramatically. I would remind the kitchen table, uh, you know, as we, the kitchen table economists, that when the president took office, the economy was almost nine and a half million jobs short of where it was uh, when the pandemic started. And we are, we've recovered almost all of those jobs. So now we have an extremely, people who want a job can get a job. That unemployment has fallen more quickly than it ever has in a recovery. And so while we have challenges, there is no doubt. And the president is focused on doing what he can in the short term to try to ease supply challenges, to nominate the Federal Reserve nominees and a Senator Toomey. I won't say anything more about that. Um, but we know that we need to get inflation under control. There is no question about it. I think that the number one way that the president uh, needs to be focused on and we all need to be focused on is getting this pandemic under control. Thank because you, this is all driven by the pandemic. Mostly because Chairman Brown's going to cut me off in a second. So I just want to finish up here because I think it's really important. I think you make some really good points. Proving a counterfactual is important. I, like many of my colleagues, would love to have been able to vote for four members of the Federal Reserve and get answers on the fifth one. I do think that um, unemployment has fallen without any question, partially because the long-term unemployed uh, should be absorbed in those numbers as well as we all know especially you all better than i that when the the the, the more people who are in the long-term unemployment line the lower your unemployment rate goes and i'll finally finish with this because you've been very gracious chairman with with, with my time and i appreciate that more than i can say that the 1.9 trillion dollar covid relief package that had about 10 percent for COVID-related health, 1% for vaccines, and $1.6 or $7 trillion for spending that actually helped to fuel the inflationary impact that we are now trying to recover from has also been problematic. 